Now, from your 24-hour news source, this is the KCRG TV9 Morning News. So welcome into your Wednesday morning. Here's a live look at the Decorah City Cam here on June the 21st. And here's why that day is important because as we look for exactly two months from today, August the 21st, people from all across the U.S. will get to witness a rare solar eclipse. So for NASA scientists, it's quite the opportunity to gather more data and information from one of the most anticipated astronomical events. Dr. Alex Young joins us this morning right now from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland. Thank you for making time for us, Dr. Doctor, and so tell tell us why, because we've been talking about this throughout the morning. So why are scientists so excited for this eclipse? Well, we're excited because this eclipse is going over such a large period, a piece of land, the entire United States, from Oregon all the way down to South Carolina, and because the path of totality, where the moon's shadow is shining down on the Earth, covers all of this land that's about an hour and a half, that gives us an opportunity to study uh, the sun for a really long period of time, this unique part of the atmosphere called the corona, but it also gives us an opportunity to study the Earth as the shadow moves across and changes the environment locally. So a question for you, because we're here in eastern Iowa, and we could see along that path from Oregon to South Carolina, it might not be directly going over us or around us, but what can we expect right here to see if we look towards the skies for this? Well, you guys are going to experience around 91% uh, of the sun covered. So you won't see totality, but you will see a partial eclipse where there will be a slight change in temperature. You will experience a huge decrease in the amount of light. And so there will be uh, quite a, a show. And of course, in your case, because you're in the only partiality, you wanna make sure you always use a safe solar viewing glasses uh, or use projection methods, because in this case, you still cannot look at the sun with your own eyes. Of course not, and good advice for that, but 91%, so definitely something to savor again for August 21st. Dr. Alex Young, NASA scientist, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So now we'll check in with meteorologist Britley Ritz with a look at that first alert forecast. And I like to say for the sunshine, we'll be in that path of totality. I have to find a way to use that a little bit more in my everyday lexicon for today, but still watching out for the storms that might be pulling through, Britley. Exactly. We do have the chance of storms moving into the TV9 viewing area. Right now on live first solar pinpoint Doppler radar, we are dry for the majority of us here. We do have a few raindrops possible over toward the Decorah area, pushing just to the north of Cedar Rapids. You might see a raindrop on your, on your windshield, but what we're really paying attention to is what's off to our west. This will be moving in later on this morning and into the afternoon, bringing in the chance for a few stronger storms. Right now, most of us dry and sitting into the low 60s. High temperatures today are going to warm to 84 degrees in Cedar Rapids as well as Iowa City, 82 in Waterloo and 78 in Dubuque. Again, that chance for storms we're watching very carefully. You want to make sure you stay with us for your full forecast for that severe weather update. Chris. Thank you, Bradley. Today, President Donald Trump is set to arrive in Cedar Rapids. After he lands at the Eastern Iowa Airport, the president is set to visit part of Kirkwood Community College. The U.S. Agriculture and Commerce Secretaries will join the president as he learns more about Kirkwood's ag programs. From there, the president will shift downtown to the U.S. Cellular Center for a rally tonight. Doors open at 4 p.m. for that. The rally is set for 7 at the U.S. Cellular Center. The event is free, but tickets are required to gain entry. At the same time, a protest is also planned for outside of the event on First Avenue East. That is set from 5 until 7.30 p.m. tonight. With any presidential visit comes a different atmosphere. We'll see this in downtown. Town Cedar Rapids all throughout the afternoon into the evening. Security, plenty of people around, supporters and protesters. For business owners along First Avenue, it could also bring a busy stretch on a summer evening. TV 9's Alicia Tarancon joins us live from outside the Double Tree. Even though the event doesn't start for 11, 12 more hours, people are already lining up. Chris, hundreds if not thousands of people are expected to make their way to downtown Cedar Rapids, especially along First Avenue right here. So a lot of local businesses say that they've added extra staff. Now Amy Weiner, who works at as a bartender at Red's Public House, says that the event at the U.S. Cellular Center typically draws in large crowds into the bar. And she estimates that President Trump will draw in even more people. We're going to be adding some extra security at the door just because we have a feeling it's going to be busy. 
Besides security, Reds is also staffing more cooks and bartenders. Other restaurants like La, La Cantina next door are doing the same thing, and restaurants say adding extra staff and security helps maintain peace downtown. And there will also be extra police presence from Lynn County to Cedar Rapids Police, Hiawatha, Marion, and a lot more. I'm reporting in downtown Cedar Rapids, Alicia Tarancon, KCRG, TV9 News. Tonight's presidential event also makes up for the trip that President Trump had to cancel from June 1st because of scheduling conflicts. As we've noted, it's free, but registration is required just to get inside. And we have information on how to secure some tickets. That's on our website, kcrg.com. Of course, TV9 will be covering the presidential visit from start to finish. We'll live stream the landing of Air Force One at the Eastern Iowa Airport at about 545. The president's event at Kirkwood Community College at 620, as well as the rally downtown at about 7 p.m. You can watch that on Facebook or on KCRG.com. You can also watch this Kirkwood and the downtown events in full on KCRG 9.2. I will thank him for uh, his cabinet really being accessible and approachable, uh, looking for opportunities to provide flexibility for states as uh, we continue to look for ways to grow the economy, address uh, health care uh, and safety issues that each one of the states are, are dealing with. Governor Kim Reynolds will also be at the president's rally tonight. She told reporters that she is proud of President Trump's work so far in office and believes that he is a good fit for Iowans. President Trump is five months and one day into his presidency. He visited Iowa back in December, weeks after winning the Oval Office and what he called a thank you tour. Some might ask, though, why is the president coming back to Iowa now? It's just a rally to acknowledge Iowans, uh, to thank them for voting for him, to putting him into the White House, and just letting everybody know in Iowa who voted for him, or even who didn't, who's skeptical, that he is delivering on all of his promises, his campaign promises. Presidential spokeswoman Tana Gertz says his promises include creating jobs and stimulating the economy. Gertz also says ag is a top priority for the president, and he is quite interested in hearing from farmers during his stay in Iowa. The White House might be close to changing its communication staff. Yesterday, Press Secretary Sean Spicer responded to a question about him taking on a different role. It's no secret we've had a couple of vacancies, including our communications director, that's gone for a while. Uh, we've been seeking input from individuals as far as ideas that they have. A source says Spicer might oversee the entire communications operation. That would mean he would get a new job and someone else would take over as press secretary. Spicer told reporters that if the White House had any sort of announcements, it would make it. Nearly every Lynn County Sheriff's deputy will be equipped with a body camera. Sheriff Brian Gardner says it took a while to get to this to point because the department wanted the cameras to be able to sync up with the cameras inside of the squad cars. All of the deputies will get them except for those working at the jail. So now when a deputy he pulls into the lot after a shift. The video footage will download to the server automatically. Sheriff Gardner says it's going to take some time for training, and he does not expect everything to go smoothly at first. As we continue to train the, the 53 folks that were issued these, just use them and see what they'll do. And uh, if, you, if you mess up and, and don't um, turn one on when, when you later think, oh, I probably should have, use that as a learning moment as we move forward, and eventually we'll all understand. Gardner says he thinks the cameras will mostly be used as evidence to help out during investigations. In a TV9 follow-up this morning, a 17-year-old accused of burning down one of the Madison County bridges. It's well known will be tried as an adult. Alexander Hoff's attorney had his charges lowered from criminal, so he could be tried in juvenile court. But court documents reveal the charges will stay criminal, and he will be tried as an adult. Hoff, along with two other teenagers, are accused of setting the Cedar Bridge on fire back in April. In a TV9 update, investigators say a major fire in Iowa City at a University of Iowa building was accidental. The damage, though, ended up being three times as expensive as the first estimate. They say the cause of the fire at the Bowen Science Building was likely an idle electrical extension cord. The fire started in a lab back on June 11th. There were no injuries from it, but the estimated damage is now $1.5 million, triple the original amount. This new figure only accounts for the building. It does not include any damage to lab equipment or other supplies. For the first time, the Iowa Supreme Court is ordering a statewide ban on weapons in courthouses. Gun rights supporters say the ruling is a massive overstep on the rights for Iowans to carry firearms. And the Freedom Ride is this weekend, Sunday, in fact, when temperatures are a little bit cooler and the conditions are just right to get out there and ride that bike. Now we have to get through a little bit of a 
storm chance later today and tomorrow. Before we can get to Sunday, of course, we'll talk about that more coming up in just a bit. Stay with us here on KCRG TV9. You're watching your 24-hour news source, KCRG.